For this video, I'd like to show you how you can make your own background textures in Photoshop. Um, why would you do this? This would be something instead of going online, so let's say I go to Google and I want to find my uh, custom background. Let's say I type in background textures. So I already typed that in. It comes up with all kinds of pre-made ones you can download. Um, if I go to images, there are ones that somebody else made. But let's say you want one that is specific to your need or you're doing something for a portfolio, you would want to use your own um, custom background instead of using somebody else's artwork. So um, I'll, I'm going to show you how to do this today without having really any drawing um, uh, ability or need to create anything with drawing, we can have Photoshop do the work and it's simply by choosing different filters to create the different um, uh, effect we would like. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and start Photoshop. Um, I'm going to go under my Windows Start menu and find Photoshop. So it's Adobe Photoshop. I'm using Creative Cloud 2019 version right now. And when it starts up, it's going to ask you to create a new document. So I'm going to go over here and click on this Create New button. And then I need to deci decide what size should I be working in. Now for this, it would be used for um, an on-screen type of application. It could be used for you know PowerPoint background. It could be used for the web. Um, for this, I'm going to be demonstrating um, for like the web most common size. If for instance, I was doing something, um, uh, let's see, for um, PowerPoint, I could actually type in my own um, uh, size if I'd like to. But for this, I'm just gonna go with web most common. That would be fine. It's great for designing for the screen. What that does is it puts it at, at 1366 by 768 pixels, sets the resolution as 72 pixels per inch, and sets it to RGB color mode. Now this is important because since we're displaying to the screen, we want it to be using red, green, blue color mode versus CMYK, which would be for print. The background contents aren't really important. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and say create. Now if you see we have an artboard we can actually start working on. Um, if you haven't done much with Photoshop, just a quick tour. We have our tool palette over here. Um, depending on what tool we click on, um, the uh, options properties change up top. And over here we have several different um, palettes. Now the one generally I make sure to always see is the layers palette. For this demo, we're not actually going to be using um, the uh, uh, layers all that much. We're just going to be doing a couple of, of uh, steps for this. Okay, so first of all, I want to pick what general color do I want to start for my background. So over here in the tools palette, um, there are two color swatches and the one on top is the foreground color and the one on behind it is the background color. Now what I want to point out is with the background color, if I click on that and I choose another color, let's say I want to make a blue up like a different blue background. If I clicked on like a, like a light blue and I said okay, notice the background does not change to that background color. Really in Photoshop it generally is just giving you two swatches to work with and in some cases it will um, reveal itself um, as part of the background but really it's just it's better to think of it as two different swatches you're working with versus um, it changing the background in any way. Now once again, I think I want to make a, a bluish background. So I'm going to set the foreground color maybe to like a nice um, rich blue. And notice I've got these. That'll be fine for what I'm doing. And a good way to start for a custom background is to come up with some sort of um, uh, kind of random look that we can then apply some filters to. And so a good way to do that, um, Photoshop has some built-in filters. So if you look up top on the... Uh, menu up here. We have filter and I can go to a thing called um, render. Oh, it's not even going to let me. Oh, because I'm in a, a the weird uh, tool. So actually that's kind of a good lesson. Notice um, that some some uh, menu options gray out if it's not letting you do that at the moment. Um, typically it's a good idea to go to the, the movement. Move tool is a good um, general um, uh, tool to go to and this should let me do it now. And actually, it's not at all. Okay, let's see. How about if I click on layer one, filter, 
There we go. Okay, so what happened? I, I mentioned, hey, we don't need to use the layers, but notice um, initially my artboard was selected and I can't draw on the artboard. I can only draw on layers. So what happened is I needed to click over here onto layer one to activate that. So sometimes, as you can see, mistakes are good um, ways to learn because you can say, hey, this didn't work. Okay, so to fix it. So I'm going here to layer one. I go up to filter and now it knows these are black now so I, they are active. So I'm going to go over here and I want to render something to start with. I'm going to go over here to render clouds and what that's going to do is generate a nice cloudy look using the foreground and background colors that I selected. So I'm going to go ahead and click on clouds and notice it, it generated a nice random um, pattern. And so that's a nice place to start, but um, that's not quite what I'm looking for. So if I want to um, add on, I can continue to add more and more filters to make this more interesting. And if I ever hate it, I can use, go to Edit, Undo, and um, Step Back. So I'm going to go here. Let's do another filter on this. Make sure I've got my layer selected. That's obviously important. So I'm going to go here, um, Filter, and let's try... Um, uh, pixelate and I kind of like the color halftone now watch this one step is gonna make this look so different so I'm gonna go to color halftone and it's gonna come up with different um, options so for this the maximum radius is going to be how large of a dot do I want and let's say I want something larger so I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and enter let's say 20 and the rest of them I'm gonna leave alone I'm gonna say okay and what a difference. So if I wanted something that's more um, kind of a little little more um, geometric instead of um, floaty, one step can do it. And I could even go on and add yet another um, filter to this. Um, I could go filter and let's try, um, let's see, do I want distort? Hey, let's just go to distort and let me do like a ripple. Notice some of these have sliders and you can go ahead and um, pull it over and see what it looks like if you like it. Um, you know, you could make something that almost looks a little houndstoothy. Uh, let's go to maybe a large, a large wave. So now if I went something like this, that's way different once again. Now let's say I really, that's not what I wanted. I can go and I say undo ripple. So you can experiment and see what you like. Another one might be kind of cool. Um, I think it was was it distort? Maybe blur. I think it was motion blur. There's all kinds of them. Let's try motion blur. And I can drag this out and make the blur um, quite a bit wider. Now the edges of this um, design start getting a little warped. So this may not be ideal. But what if I just did it a bit? And that looks kind of cool. So just in really three steps, I've got a different looking um, background. So how about I try another one and just see what a couple of steps can get to get us. So I'm going to go ahead and say File, New. And I'm going to go ahead and say Webmost Common again. Go ahead and Create. And let's pick a different color. So let's say, um, let's go more in the, the red-orange area. And how about I'll make the background color just white and just kind of have it create it with the, the orangey color. So I'm going to start again with the... Um, uh, render clouds and start there but let's add something different so how about I go um, filter now oh, there's something kind of interesting we have filter gallery and let me show you what what happens with that that you can preview things in advance um, and it'll show you all the different things it would look like when you click on it so colored pencil kind of looked terrible um, cut out it really depends on what you're looking for um, Look, fresco, doesn't that look kind of crazy? And there's different um, settings here that I can drag out to change it. Let's see if brush detail changes. Actually, these aren't changing all that much. Hmm, all right, so that one doesn't change much at all. Um, let's go through. I do like plastic wrap, that's kind of cool. Um, and uh, looks like I can kind of change it a little bit. So there's different textures. Um, there are brush strokes. Okay, so that looks very different. Um, distort. 
So it's kind of nice. You can do kind of like that looks almost like a security glass. So we could change the ripple size. Um, um, there should be um, sketch. So these will start um, looking kind of kind of different. And the names sometimes don't necessarily indicate what it it's going to look like. So sometimes it's good just to click on it and see. So notice I'm expanding these these folders, um, taking a peek. Oh, and then there's here glowing edges. Oh, that, I kind of like that. That's kind of very different. Starts way different than orange, but I, I kind of like the look of that. I'm, I'm dragging over here, moving the edge width a little bit. Let's see. And right now, honestly, I'm just trying things out to see what it looks like. And it almost looks like a close-up of a sweater or something very um, fibrous. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, and let's start with that. Okay, so if you look, let me just go undo. Look how different it is from there. And I can go ahead and say redo. Um, and I could almost stop here. I could also go and go to filter and try some other things. Um, let's try. I'm just going to go through and see what we have. Sharpen isn't going to do much. That's, that's nice for when you're resizing images and things. Um, stylize. There are some. Let's see what solarize looks like. Oh, it doesn't do much of anything. I'm going to undo that. Um, let's see what we've got under render um, flame. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, it won't let me do that. Filter. Some of these aren't going to um, help us that much. Oil paint. Let's see. Ooh, that might look kind of nice. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in on that. And that's kind of a neat look. So let me go undo. That's before, after. I kind of like like the look of that. Okay. So um, so let's say I've got this, and let's say I want this as a background, but I want it to be a little more faded, so I could put text and things over it. What I can do over here in the layers is I can add a layer. So in the layers palette I have down here, there is a create a new layer um, icon. I'm gonna click on that. And for instance, I can fill that with a solid color and then um, uh, change the opacity to make this a little more faded. So let's say I want to fill this with white. Let's say I want this to be kind of like a, a nice, uh, um, just kind of a faded back color. So I have this. I'm going to pick white as my foreground color. And then I'm going to use the paint bucket tool, which I'm going to go over here. It's also, it's underneath the gradient tool. Um, notice that all of the tools that have the little arrow, their triangle next to them, you can click on it and expand to other tools. So I'm going to go to paint bucket. And what paint bucket's going to do on this layer is dump it through the entire um, frame. And um, uh, commonly, if I'm working with people and they, they, call me over and go, oh my gosh, I destroyed my my graphic and um, I can't see it anymore. And sometimes they just paint bucketed a layer above the other one. So if you notice, we've got our two layers. The white layer is above the textured layer. Um, I could take this bottom layer and move it above the white. Okay, so feel whatever layer is on top is the one that you see first. But what I want to do here is fade this back. So I'm going to take the white layer and I can change the opacity and I can drag that down. And um, so this would be with nothing, but I could just add a little bit to kind of make it a little more faded if I wanted something, if I wanted um, things over the top. Um, and once again, you know, there is the, always the great thing about undos or I could throw this away because honestly, I kind of liked it better with the um, the darker view. So if I don't want this layer anymore, I can just take it and drag it to the garbage can. So I, I kind of like how this looks. So if you look, we've got a couple of very different ones just from using filters a few times. Um, if you're making a background, I'd encourage you to um, try out a few different things. And um, if you like a, a certain setting, write down what you did because sometimes it's like, oh, hey, I really liked how that worked out. Um, Let's see, one more thing. I'm going to go over, maybe I'll just start with this. I, I like it, but I'm going to um, uh, show you a couple more filters on it. Um, I think it's on Pixelate. They have things like mosaics. Um, Crystallize is kind of nice for backgrounds, and you can change the cell size for that. I'm sure you've seen backgrounds that look like this, and that's really all, all that's necessary. Um, so I could say, okay. Um, I'm going to undo that so we can try a different one. 
um, filter, um, back to pixelate. I like that one a lot. Um, uh, mosaic uh, makes everything into um, uh, a little a grid. So if you chose green, you could make um, something very Minecrafty um, pretty quickly. But um, I'm just going to leave it as is because I like it. So once again, you can try things, undo. Um, when I like it, I would just go ahead and go File, Save As, and save it as, keep it as a Photoshop file, um, save it somewhere where I can find it, um, and um, uh, then I'm able to edit it.